Hi there and welcome to Get Indie Gaming, where today we're counting down our top 10 picks of the indie games on the Nintendo Switch we think everybody should play. For more videos, reviews and news, be sure to check out our spin-off website, GetIndieGaming.com. There's a link down in the description. For this list, we're looking at indie games that have found a place within Switch owners' hearts, be this due to the gameplay, music, art style or a mix of all three. Before we jump into the top 10, here's a handful of games, our honourable mentions, that didn't quite make it into the top rundown. First up, we have Goragoa, developed by James Roberts over a six year period. While the gameplay is simple, the wordless story revolves around a young boy's interaction with a mysterious monster. The puzzle aspects are sublime, as is the overall art style and accompanying soundtrack. In Owlboy, we find a human-owl hybrid within a world of beautifully written characters and awesome looking backgrounds. Owlboy might look like a 16-bit throwback with its ally system, smartly executed puzzles and enemy combat, however the technical skills here by the developers should never be underestimated. Here we have Shovel Knight, which is a 2D side-scroller that offers excellent all-round platforming fun, together with a great story and impressive art styles. The addition of new content on the Switch to play mobile, and with more free DLC to come, this makes Shovel Knight an excellent purchase even if you already own it on other platforms. First out way back in 2010, Limbo from Playdead ported onto the Switch this past summer, and this adventure puzzle game has lost nothing in the move. It's superbly morose and minimal as ever, although the cleverness of the physics-based puzzles and platforming sections work well both in docked and handheld modes. The last of the honourable mentions, Golf Story offers a sweet RPG that's about finding your own self-worth. Understanding your potential and you get to meet an abundance of characters and things to do, including multi-tiered quests that feel more in common with an open world sim than it does a game about golf. Perhaps you're sceptical? Honestly, if we didn't love it, Golf Story wouldn't be here. And with those honourable mentions taken care of, let's get quickly going into the Top 10 Countdown. Out this past September, three years after it first came to the PC, Undertale sits in our number 10 position. From the overall look and feel, you would be very much mistaken in thinking Undertale is an everyday retro looking action RPG. It plays just as well on the Switch as it did across other platforms. Its cleverness comes from its ability to subvert your expectations at every opportunity, and very much sets out to break the rules of the genre from the get go. It's funny and well written throughout, and offers a touching storyline, a haunting soundtrack, and we've enjoyed it today as much as we did when it first launched. Number 9 and coming from the team behind FTL Faster Than Light, Into the Breach is a turn-based tactical game taking place on small miniature battlefields. In a field of many such games, Into the Breach is arguably one of the most fun and succinct strategy games we've ever seen. It plays perfectly well in docked and handheld mode, with this one being another favourite of ours on the journey into work. As to the game, it's all about survival, with you needing to take out enemy mechs whilst looking after your own power grids. With randomly generated levels and many unlocks, it's a turn-based game to keep coming back to. Number 8, and the first of more than a handful of Metroidvanias in this countdown, SteamWorld Dig 2 uses the basic formula of the original, 
as before you dig under an old west town where you return to the surface to sell your loot to buy upgrades and then head back down underground. As before there are upgrade stations and like last time you need to keep a track of your health meter. The design is to a few words simply stunning with the characters and backgrounds vividly illustrated. There is perhaps a slight decrease in difficulty compared to the first in the series and this is particularly relevant to the AI spirit guide you can use to help guide you and help map your path. That being said you can turn off the AI which helps uplift the difficulty should you choose to do so. At the number 7 in a game that gets better as you play it, The Messenger starts off as an out and out clone of those side scrolling games from the NES era. It would be easy to pass The Messenger by as being a cheap shot to evoke such nostalgia, although later on in the game it pivots into something far more meaningful. It's straight out of the Ninja Gaiden series with a simple plotline that sees you moving sideways across the levels, fighting enemies and upgrading your kit as you do so. Three or four hours into the game, as we've just suggested, it flips from being an 8-bit to a 16-bit aesthetic with upgrades to your character and the world around him. It comes with a fantastic soundtrack, it's superbly written and the story comes nicely paced with the gameplay rewarding skill and patience. The Messenger is well deserving of a place in this countdown. Next, we have for many an absolute classic, and there's no doubt some of you might have expected Hollow Knight to have featured higher up this rundown. It first came out on the PC in late February of last year to nearly universal acclaim. Since then, the game has enjoyed a number of DLCs and came to the Switch this past June. Hollow Knight, for those unaware, is a 2D Metroidvania featuring an insect knight with a sword by way of a needle. It manages to subtly blend exploration with combat, and this elevates it above so many in this crowded marketplace. With numerous biomes and design changes, each new area you discover feels fresh. The platforming is first rate, and the boss fights when they come demand skill and precision. Hollow Knight is utterly beautiful to look at, listen to, and play. If you haven't yet done so, try and pick this up as soon as you can. The second game from Playdead to feature in this video, Inside marks the halfway point in this countdown. Originally released in 2016, the port onto the Switch has been achieved without a hitch, with it looking as awesome and running as well as it did the first time we played it. While there are some platforming sections, the core aspect of the game relates to puzzle solving that emerge, at times, without you even know they're unfolding around you. The visual storytelling and in truth the entire game is the same as before, and while we would have liked to have seen something new for the port, this doesn't diminish the overall experience. Inside uses the show don't tell method to perfection with you finding what you need to do to move on by way of exploration and interaction with the gameplay elements. Inside continues to offer an introspective, thought provoking experience that while relatively short, begs to be played on the Switch if you're able. Just off the podium in the number 4 position, Stardew Valley, while available to play on pretty much anything that plays games, we feel it certainly deserves a place high up in this list of must play games on the Switch. Offering a top down, pixel crafted farming sim, it borrows from Harvest Moon and builds its own identity. At the start you learn you've quit the city life to move to your grandfather's farm. From there you do whatever you want to do. Be this planting crops, going for a spot of fishing and interacting with the many in-game NPCs. We've put well over a hundred hours into Stardew Valley on the Switch, and each time we come back to it, it gives us that familiar feeling of joy every time we do so.
Taking the third spot in this countdown, we have Celeste which came out earlier this year. Upon launch, it quickly gained notoriety and found a firm fanbase because of its difficulty level and yes, Celeste as they say is hard as nails. That being said, the team behind the game have added a number of options to alter this difficulty to help and aid the game's access and opportunity to those of us with a lower gaming skill set or others, for example, who lack the dexterity or hand-eye coordinations to fully play the game as the developers had intended. It's a genius addition and while the out and out purists may tut away, it opens Celeste to the widest possible audience. The game takes 10 or so hours and revolves around jumping across the level in guided set pieces. With its SNES style graphics and subtle portrayal of mental illness, it comes with an emotional story and it's one of the best 2D platformers we've ever played. Our runner up and first out in 2015. Axiom Verge takes from Metroid and adds elements from Bionic Commando and Contra. It then mashes them all together to create the second best indie game you can play on the Switch. Inspired by the games of the 8-bit era, although graphically looking closer to those of the 16-bit generation, the work in the sprites is exquisite, particularly in how the bosses have been put together with all their moving parts and the graphical representations of the action-based patterns you must learn to get the better of them. We played Axiom Verge on the PC when it first came out and this port feels as fresh and a fine replication. Sadly, there's no additional content, although simply being able to play this while mobile is the real draw. It looks magnificent in handheld mode and like others in this list, we've played it for many hours out and about on our morning and evening commutes into the office. It remains as fun as and addictive as it did back in 2015 and for us, there's only one indie game out there on the Switch that betters it. Dead Cells is the number one indie game of all time. Not just on the Switch, but on any platform. Yep, that's a bold statement indeed, although it's a bunch of words Dead Cells backs up a plenty. Dead Cells is a collection or mashup of Rogue Vania elements with the addition of permadeath and to honest to goodness a controller throwing level of difficulty that oozes with class, complexity and yet with it comes the compulsion to simply keep playing. It's wholesomely addictive and while that might seem counterintuitive, its design rewards playthrough after playthrough with new weapons to get hold of and countless new areas to discover. You begin hopelessly underpowered with a sword and a bow which don't allow you to get too far and yet time after time you pick up new skills, weapon upgrades which just allow you to get that little bit further. In the end sticking to it and a little bit of patience will get you there. The real skill comes from your ability to build your character and the loadout to suit your playstyle and the enemies you face. Dead Cells is a phenomenal achievement with the perfect mix of fun to enjoyment to frustration ratio and in our mind as we said at the start of this section, it's not only the best indie game on the Switch, but the best indie game ever made. And with Dead Cells sitting at the top of this list, did you agree with our picks? Let us know in the usual places and while you're here, check out these other great clips from Get Indie Gaming and subscribe to regular indie game updates.